Picture the scenario. You've been tasked to write a scene. You've gotten your protagonist to where your protagonist needs to be, and you've described everything from the state of the weather outside the house right down to the flavor of bubblegum in your protagonist's mouth. All you need to do now is craft what happens next, and your mind goes blank. Nothing can be conjured up on the blank screen in front of you, or the page that's in the typewriter, or the journal in which you're writing, whatever receptacle you put all your creative ideas in. In short, you experience what many writers dreadfully refer to as writer's block. Now the definition of writer's block is a condition in which an author loses the ability to create new work, or experiences a creative slowdown. Now, many writers actually believe that writer's block is a myth. Trust me, Google is writer's block a myth and look at all the results. And yet, like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, its blurry, fuzzy imprint lurks around every single writing assignment going. As an idiot who's embarking on this long journey to write and publish his first fiction novel, Atticus the Mighty, by September 2021, I had to be prepared in case I get writer's block so that I know how to deal with it. That's why I decided to put writer's block on the writer's block. And so, our question this week, is writer's block real? And if it is, how do you deal with it? Two questions, two questions this week. Hi, I'm Marcus and I'm the idiot on the writer's block. So, in order to find out if writer's block was real or not, and if it was, how to deal with it, we decided to find out from these experts. Here is what they all had to say on the topic of writer's block. I would say, first of all, this is my opinion. I am not the god of writer's block. So again, just my opinion. And I personally am not a believer that writer's block is a thing. However, I do believe that writers can get stuck in their story. But that's usually because, in my opinion, they didn't plan the scene or book out enough in advance. And I know there's the pantsers and the planters or the gardeners and the architects, however you want to call it. And essentially, there's a group of people that don't plan before they write. They just fly by the seat of their pants and they write the story. There's other people that plan in advance and they're usually called plotters or architects and the opposite is called pantsers or gardeners. Oh gosh, I'm mixing this up. But essentially, if a writer doesn't write often and they haven't created the writing muscles they need to write for longer spurts of time, maybe you're going to get stuck. But the more you practice, the better you get at it. Or the more you plan, maybe the less you'll get stuck because you have a roadmap for where you're going. All that to say, here are my couple of tips. As I said before, prepare in advance of when you write a chapter or scene. So maybe you're like, I'm going to write chapter one today, or I'm going to write chapter 15 today. Kind of plan just a little bit where that scene is going, even if you're on the pantser side of things, just so you have a general idea. You don't have to plan the ending of the book, but plan where you're going that day. And then my second tip is to write often, build up those writerly muscles. And my final tip is talk to author friends. If you've written yourself into a corner and can't find a way out, maybe it's a plot hole, maybe you just don't know where to go next, talk to your author friends if you got stuck. I'm, I'm somewhat in the middle of, of in this one. Um, I, I don't think it doesn't exist, but I wouldn't call it writer's block. For me, when that thing happens that people attribute to writer's block, it means that you haven't solved the problem yet. And there's something going on in your story that you haven't corrected, you know? Um, I can't remember if, who said this, but uh, I think it might have been Noel Coward, but please, it might not have been Noel Coward. <laughs> but, you know, he said, um, you know, all problems are practical and all practical problems can be solved. So basically, that's my attitude to it. That was passed on to me by a, a theatre director I worked with, Rig Sahara. And uh, so I tend to just back off from the text. I rest. I watch other things to be influenced. I go out to the park. Funny enough, my son asked me this the other day. He's been writing a story through lockdown. And he said, he said, what happens when you get stuck? You know, and he's just asking me this. And I was saying, look, just put it down for a while. Let it, let it simmer for a while, you know, go away from it. And what you're hoping is that the inspiration will just pop up because your mind keeps working. It's like when you're trying to remember something, 
and you say, oh, I can't remember it. Let me just, you know, like forget about it and do something else. But your mind keeps trying to remember. So your mind will keep working at the problem. And one day, hopefully, you'll, you'll pop up and be like, oh, that's what it is. That's what I need. So my main thing is just to um, don't push hard. Because if you push hard, you'll push it away. That's a good question. So writer's block. I personally am really, really strapped for time um, because I've got a job and I've got two children and I've been doing a whole lot of homeschooling. They're actually in school for the first time today and they get three days before the summer holidays start. So I don't think, I wouldn't say that there is such thing as writer's block, but what I would say is that you will inevitably get to a point when you're writing your novel where you're stuck on a plot and you can't write yourself out of it. And I, th I would just say in those moments, you've probably just got to park that bit and then write something else. So I do see it as you've got to train yourself to be really disciplined and just write, even if it's not coming to you, ditch what you were going to originally write and start writing something else. I, I don't necessarily mean another book, I mean another part of the book. Um, I know lots of people talk about writer's block and I do believe that obviously you get some days where it just comes to you thick and fast and other days you've got to really, really work for it. Um, but normally, even though you're maybe having an off day and you're writing something that you just know isn't absolutely great at the time, you will be able to salvage something from it. And it also might mean that even if it gets cut from what you're writing at the moment, you might use it somewhere else later. So it's never wasted time. I just feel like it's just part of the process. Like, how can you have been a writer and never, ever experienced writer's block? It just doesn't make any sense. To That's a lie. They're all <laughs> lying. Every, every, every single one of them is a liar. <laughs> Basically, there's no way that they wouldn't have encountered writer's block. Um, especially when you think about how many drafts you have to do for each novel. You know, no single writer ever writes a perfect draft the first time. Are you really saying you never encountered writer's block? Not even once? Come on, guys. <laughs> I find that extraordinary. Okay. okay, so I will say this. I do believe it exists um, because it does happen and it has happened to me. Um, one thing I struggle with um, more than writer's block, though, is writer's fear. <laughs> which is my own sort of warped version of it and um, writer's fear is even before you come to the writer's block is when you get these periods of just high anxiety about the writing so it could be that you're not writing at the time and you feel really anxious about it or it could be that you're writing and you still feel really anxious about it so sometimes I go through, through writer's fear um, and that kind of it works itself out um, you know, as, as I'm in the writing process. But writer's block, certainly I think it does happen. Although I don't get writer's block for like lo lengthy periods of time. Um, usually what happens when I get it is I tend to go on walks every day. So um, we have a dog and I walk um, the dog um, quite often. So interestingly enough, whenever I have blockages about the process or I don't know certain plot lines or I just feel anxious about a particular point, it often comes to you when you're away from the writing. So my thing is, when you have writer's block, do the other things that make you excited. So one of the things I love to do, I love films, I love cinema, I'm like you. Uh, and I like, I watch lots of world cinema, I watch lots of independent cinema. So, you know, if I'm often like having trouble with writing, um, on the page I'll just go you know catch them a couple of films with a friend a fit friend of mine who also loves films and we we often go and catch stuff together um, just something stimulating and something that you know really will get you um, excited again and that interestingly enough feeds into the writing because it's all writing at the end of the day um, it's just for the screen you know so um, or um, one thing I also love to do is I love going to museums I love going to exhibitions I'm a very visual writer and I love image making image making is huge for me so I tend to go to exhibitions to see um, lots of images uh, because that helps me with the writing process so if I'm stuck I'll just and that's one of the great things about living in London is that you know there's so many um, free exhibitions and there's so many museums that you can go to like all sorts of interesting things so um, 
often I'll do that um, or I'll go to the theatre, you know, just something that's also creative, but not exactly what you do. But somehow it all feeds into the same creative ecosystem. So that's my way um, of getting around the, the writing blog and, you know, trusting yourself that it will come. Uh, because you've been through the process before. Um, if you've been writing for a long time, you would have you would have confronted having dealt with writer's block. Um, and you will get used to, you know, feeling like, okay, this has come again. How did I get past the before? Oh yeah, I did X, Y, Z. Okay, I just have to trust myself that, you know, it will be fine. Um, and that's it. And, and I think the key thing is to keep yourself excited and find ways about being excited. Um, and then when you do that, you you go back to the page, you know, you're hungry to go back to the page. So I think those are the two things or two tips I would suggest, you know, do the stuff aside from the writing that gets you stimulated, that you love to do, that you enjoy. And that will feed that will feed into the work anyway. Um, and try to find, you know, stuff that makes you excited, because when you're excited, um, but what that does is it translates onto the page um, but um, yeah anyway that's my take on it I definitely have experienced it um, several times and I definitely have experienced my own other weird version of of it um, which is the, the writer's fear that I mentioned but you know you can get get around it people do all the time so yeah that you know what I think is interesting I think that so this whole conversation about around writer's block like it's been around for so long and of course multiple writers have talked about it and talked about their experiences of it but I also think that there's now a new thing of people denying <laughs> that they that they've ever had writer's block like I think that's also now a thing um so it's just interesting like the things that become popular the writers suddenly start like doing and they start saying, oh no I've never had that because more and more writers are maybe denying that they experience writer's block. So they think that, or maybe that's the cool thing to say that I've never had it, but. Writer's block exists if you choose to believe it exists. So the writer's block is, is one of those things where it's, it's just you getting in your own way. It really has nothing to do. There, there's, there's not some spiritual energy out there that stops you from writing a book. I think that writer's block comes from three different sources. The first source is fear. If you can get a handle on your fear, you can get a handle on your career. Writers, I, I, you know, I, I, I myself am no exception to this. We are just sensitive creatures. We just are. <laughs> and there's just something about uh, the brain chemistry of writers that we are capable of doing so many great things but our brains and, and our fear get in the way of that. And so self-doubt and, and lack of self-esteem and lack of self-confidence and just the fact that we have a society that doesn't always appreciate what we do, right? I mean, if you think about, you talk to somebody and, 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 and you tell them, hey, did you, did you watch the, the, newest ver the newest episode of whatever TV show, right? And they're like, oh yeah, I absolutely love that and so on and so forth. And, and then in the very next sentence, you say, I would love to be able to be a writer and write a TV show like that. They'll be like, no, you could never be a writer. That They never make any money, you know? <laughs> and so we have this weird double standard where we have society that really, that appreciates the art, but doesn't appreciate the artist. And that gets internalized when you're thinking about becoming a writer because it's like, well, I, I could be an, I could be an engineer or I should be a carpenter or I should be something else that society appreciates. And so that seeps into what we do. All right. That's the first cause of it. And that's the big one. The second one is uh, lack of inspiration and motivation. So we, we were talking about TV earlier. If you don't if you don't watch TV or if you're not reading books regularly, you're not filling your creative well. And so, of course, nothing's going to come out because you're empty. You know, that's a, that's a second thing. It's fundamental. And the third thing is personal circumstances. So sometimes life happens, you know, if you've got a sick parent or um, aging parent, or, you know, your spouse is sick or your kid is sick, or you're, you're worrying about paying your bills or whatever that might be subconsciously, that's going to weigh on you. And if you take care of the personal circumstance, you'll find that the writer's block goes away. So to me, that's what I've always learned in the past to, to be able to deal with that because 
we have so many ideas. Like I have tons of ideas. I, there, I'm going to die before I get all the ideas in my head onto the page. Um, so if you can just learn those three things, that'll help you a lot with writer's block. Well, I think there is writer's block. I don't know. I think it's become a sort of bit of a myth, mythical, mystical thing. Oh, I've got writer's block. Well, you know, writer's block is you don't know what you want to write and that's it. So if you haven't, you know, can't think of something to write, um, I, you know, the, the, the main cure for writer's block is a deadline and a commission. I've never had writer's block when somebody said to me, Mark, we want the script in by this date. I'll write the script <laughs> and deliver it. The worst thing, the worst thing is like with me at the moment, I, you know, I took a gap year that took, turned into a gap five years. Uh, I've been having fun, you know, I've been playing with the band, I've been doing this and doing that, and I have been writing bits and bobs. But I'm kind of on nobody's clock. So there's nobody saying to me, right, this has to be done. And I have got a couple of projects people are waiting for. But it's kind of, you know, it's down to me. So I've been, you know, I've had time out, I suppose. But is that writer's block? I don't think so. And people find they can't write, probably because they get tied up in their head about what they're doing, and why they're doing it, and what it's all about, you know. And I think if you, if you can kind of get past those issues and get yourself a deadline you know maybe what was that the, the famous greek story um the climbing oh, my classical head's gone off where the women withhold sex till the men agree to peace or something and if you're married if you're a woman or you're and you, know, you know just say to your wife look or to your husband look we're not gonna have sex or the other way around she or he may, you know, I want to see 5,000 pages of, of, of words. Not 5,000 pages, that'd be too much. 5,000 words. And then the weekend, baby, you know, I'll put the Barry, you know, Barry White on the turntable and we'll have a romantic night. I don't know, something like that. You've got to find some trick that if you're not officially commissioned, you get yourself uh, under a, you know, a deadline. I'm going to make sure my wife never listens to this. <laughs> oh, just to my get that my book day. finished. Big time, man. Yeah. And there you have it, some fine experts and their opinions on the subject of writer's block. You can check the description of this video for links to their work. But what did you think? Do you agree with their opinions about writer's block? Do you think writer's block is real? Or is it just a myth made up by writers to excuse their lack of output? Do you have any tips on how to deal with writer's block? If you would like to share them with us, please put them in the comments to this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to get more great tips on how to write and publish your first fiction novel. I'm Marcus, and I'll see you next time.